Hello, everyone. So uh, today we had uh, uh, our ISI exam. So today is 14th of May, 2023. So we had our ISI exam and uh, let's talk about it. So uh, yeah, hi, I'm Orko Pratudash and uh, currently I'm doing my PhD from ISI Kolkata. So uh, in this video, I'm going to discuss the uh, problem four from ISI uh, 2023 UGB. So yes, I'm going to discuss uh, all the problems one by one. So I'll start with the easiest one this time uh, and uh, gradually uh, solve the others as well. Uh, so first talking about uh, the cutoff. So everyone is uh, uh, interested to know, like uh, la last year, the UGB paper was, uh, uh, I mean, it's it was easy. Okay, so uh, it, um, most of the people could do six problems to like more than six problems. So, but this year it was like a moderate one. Okay, so not very easy, not very tough, but a moderate one. So uh, expected cutoff would be like four to 4.5. So those who have done more than that, like five questions correctly. So I think they are very, very safe. And uh, the UGA part was a little uh, easy this time. Not very easy, I would say, but yeah, relatively easy. So relatively easier. So um, uh, I mean, the uh, cutoff could go higher for UGA, but uh, as you know that even the last time uh, it was done two times UGA plus uh, uh, four, uh, six times uh, UGB. So the main weightage is given to the subjective part. So. Uh, there's nothing to worry about those who have done very well in the subjective, but a uh, little less in um, the objective one, but uh, those who have done uh, relatively, bo uh, I mean, uh, suppose in the EG, if you have done uh, more than uh, 22, greater than equals to 22, so I, and in the subjective, if you have done four uh, to five problems, so you have a fair chance, okay? Five problems would be really, really good. So, uh, considering the level of this paper. Okay. So without wasting time, uh, again, let's get started. So, uh, here is the, uh, uh question paper. And, uh, now let's go to the fourth problem. So, which was the easiest problem according to me throughout the paper? Uh, someone could say the sixth one is also easier, but, uh, yeah. So let's, uh, then discuss the fourth problem. So if you haven't been able to solve the fourth problem, so. Uh, uh, or, uh, uh, so you, you, you should consider, uh, studying more. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let's discuss. So, uh, it's all given that we have 51, uh, distinct natural numbers. So all are distinct. Okay. And uh, each has exactly 2023 20, positive integer factors. And, uh, just, just an example is given to, to the part, uh, 2022 has exactly 2023 20, positive integer factors and it's given. So assume that no prime larger than 11 uh, divides any one of the NIs. So that means all the prime factors could be 2, 3, 5, 7, or 11. Show that there must be some perfect cube among the NIs. Okay. So you must use the fact that 2023 uh, 20, is nothing but 7 into 17 into 17. So this, like this was a major, major hint. Okay. So here, I mean, once this hint is given, so half of the problem is already done there. So uh, let me show you why. So first of all, uh, what could be our prime factors? That is uh, the prime factors could be, so this is uh, UGB 2023, problem four. So uh, the prime factors could be two, three, five, seven, 11. And, uh, now, uh, let's consider our case one where, uh, our numbers in I can have like whatever numbers I can form with the help of these prime factors. And, uh, so what my idea is like, I'll try to, uh, create a set where I'll be making numbers uh where uh, which has prime factors uh either 2 3 5 or 7 or 11 and it has uh, 2023 uh different uh, positive devices okay so and uh, also i'll try to uh, i mean make uh, non perfect uh, cube cubic numbers okay so uh, then uh, so that means like uh, i mean i'll show that the max that i can make is uh, uh, 50, uh, 50 such numbers. Okay. So then since there are 51 such distinct numbers, so one of them have, have to be a perfect cube. Okay. 
so let's see uh, so for the single uh, prime factor ones so case one is i'm considering those numbers which i can form having only uh, a single prime factor so it's of the form p1 to the power alpha 1 so the number of uh, devices positive devices of this would be nothing but alpha 1 plus 1 and which is nothing but 2023 20, okay so that implies that alpha 1 is 2022 20, and so uh, our numbers would have to be of the form p 1 to the power 2022 whatever p1 or p so where p belongs to either 2 3 5 7 or 11 so now here you can see it's basically a perfect cube okay so because uh, 2022 is basically divisible by 3 so now all in this case one i'm getting no such numbers which are favorable to me okay so if it's a perfect cube uh, so I, i'll exclude them okay so i'll only be taking which are not so and i'll be maximizing my set so that's the so uh, that's my way so case two would be like two prime factors okay so p1 to the power alpha one p2 to the power alpha two where uh, p1 and p2 are prime factors um, uh, which are one of two three five seven or eleven okay so then uh, our number of positive devices would be alpha 1 plus 1 alpha 2 plus 1 times alpha 2 plus 1 which is nothing but has to be 2023 20, so this is the given condition that the number of positive devices have to be 2023 20, so implies that uh, now uh, okay so now let's uh, we know that uh, the prime factorization is already given so this is equals to nothing but 17 times 17 times 7 so in how many ways uh, can we divide the uh, these factors into two such groups so that is basically i can make alpha 1 plus 1 to be 17 and uh, alpha 2 plus 1 to be equal to 17 times 7 or uh, vice versa like alpha 1 plus 1 as 17 times 7 uh, uh, and uh, alpha 2 plus 1 as 17 okay now notice that like uh, none of the factors here could be one because then it would imply that uh, uh, alpha is zero so uh, basically we are considering that it has two prime factors so that would contradict the fact that it has two prime factors so uh, yeah it's fine so here we are getting basically two cases where uh, it's not a perfect cube but uh, if we consider the case where like uh, the other cases like where one of them will be 17 times 7 and the other uh, factor would be 7 so you can very well see that then uh, alpha 1 and uh, alpha 2 would be divisible by 3 so those cases would uh, give me perfect cubes so again uh, I'm not taking that so that means from case to the not uh, perfect cube number so the total number of not perfect cube numbers that I'm getting is so I can choose uh, there are five prime factors so from there uh, I can choose two prime factors in five choose two ways and each time I can choose them so I can uh, uh, I mean form these two cases so which is basically times two and that is nothing but five choose two is ten times two which is twenty okay so I'm getting twenty such uh, not perfect cubes okay and I, I i can't get any other uh, numbers apart from these 20 numbers okay so all the other numbers I, that i can form i just uh, said uh, i just proved that they are going to be uh, perfect cubes because the, then alpha i's are going to be divisible by 3 so now let's come to case 3 p1 to the power alpha 1 three prime factors p3 to the power alpha 3 so now again we have uh, sigma of so let's write directly sigma of this number alpha one plus one so sigma i am denoting it as a function which is counting the number of devices uh, positive devices of a number okay so uh, 
yeah, alpha two plus one times alpha three plus one, which is nothing but uh, 2023, which is again 17 times seven times seven. And now uh, I have three uh, factors. So this I can uh, like rearrange in how many ways basically. So in uh, like you said, you see that there are uh, 17, 17 and seven. So like uh, I, I, I can't have uh, any one of them to be one or any of the factors to be one. So that means 17 has to go to one of the factors. Uh, again, another 17 has to go to another one and seven has to go to the uh, final one. So that means it's just a rearrangement. So how many rearrangements can I form here? Three factorial divided by uh, the two 17s are uh, equal. So divided by two factorial, which is basically three. So now again, uh, 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 and each of them are basically forming. Uh, so then you can very well see that uh, alpha i's are nothing but 16, 16, and uh, 6. So which is not forming a perfect cube. So here, the total number of numbers that I can uh, get, which are not perfect cubes, is 5 choose 3. So I have 5 prime factors, choosing 3 out of them. And uh, then multiplying uh, by the number of cases I can have each time, that is 3. So five choose two, uh, five choose three is ten times three, which is thirty. So total I'm having thirty here, twenty. So total I'm having fifty. Okay. So twenty plus thirty is case two and case uh, three. So total fifty such numbers I can get. So that uh, like ma maximum I can make fifty such numbers with a given condition, such that they are not perfect cubes. So since I have to form 51 distinct such numbers, so that means like whatever be the case, I can't uh, have all of them to be uh, not perfect cubes. I can make at max 50 of them to be not perfect cubes. So that means one of them has to be a perfect cube and uh, that proves the problem. Okay. So yeah, uh, the rest of the problems are, uh, I'll post them soon. So uh, stay tuned. So thanks for watching. And if you like the solution, don't forget to put a like. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Keep watching and keep learning and uh, stay tuned. See you in the next one.